I've always liked playing roguelikes, and after dying in my 3 hour long Risk of Rain 2 run because I accidentally touched a mushroom for one frame, I decided that it was time to make my own. Unfortunately for me, this is a YouTube video, so I only have 24 hours to make the game, and also I have to ask you to subscribe right now. Sorry, I don't make the rules. I think I have an interesting idea for the game to start with, but I'll let you in on that as I make the game. For now, let's just get started. So the first thing I did with this project was throw together some art. I'm keeping the pixel art, as it's fast to make and I like how it looks. However, I'm trying out a slightly different style this time, with flat, simple colors and thick, dark outlines. I think this style is clean and it's very easy to get looking good. So I made the player, who is just this yellow guy. Then I made a sword, an enemy who is a color swap of the player, and this. This is the engine, and you have to defend it from swarms of enemies. So this is probably a good time to explain my plan for the game. So my idea is that you are riding an elevator down, and you have to defend the engine to keep the elevator running. In order to do this, you can build defenses like these walls I just drew. The base gameplay for the game is inspired by an IO game I played years ago called Zomza.io. In fact, I wonder how that game is doing now. Well, it hasn't been updated in... 6 years. And every server is filled with what I guess are bots. It just isn't the same. So I have some other plans, but I doubt I'll get to most of these in 24 hours, so my goal for now is just to make a basic game that is technically a roguelike in a day. And then I can maybe develop it in little sprints in future videos if I want to. But now that I have this art in the game, it's time to make the base of the gameplay. Okay, so it's been a few hours, but this is where I am right now. I used a lot of stuff from my main game project, Seaborn, in order to start this game. Personally, I don't consider it cheating, because I already made it, and I was already going to make very similar stuff in this game. So why waste time when I have a perfectly good base already made? These are the main champions which I am bringing over. First off, the instance controller. This is a base for all instances in the game, which are basically all things of health, like the player, buildings, and enemies. Having this base class will allow me to make functions like taking damage universal, which is way faster and cleaner. Second up, I brought over the player movement. It's a little bit simpler than it is in Project Seaborn, but there's basic top-down movement, these nice Nice dust particles which have object pulling, and also some dashing. Finally, I brought on the attack system that I've been using in games for a little while now. This attack system is inspired by Archfail and is just a very simple system with swinging the sword and projectiles, but I like it. And with these champions in place, I have a basic setup for the player to move and attack. So it's time to build the very first unique part of this game, the building mechanic. I just made the building system. It was pretty simple actually. I set up grid snapping, instantiated buildings that derive from the instance controller, and they initially start out transparent and non-colliding, but whenever you place them down, it sets them up in the world, after checking to make sure it isn't colliding with anything. And now I'm going to build the scene with the elevator. It'll keep to the style of the game so far, but I want to try out having some 3D or fake 3D parts for the walls around the elevator to really make it look more like an elevator and less like just a ground. I'm not gonna lie, that was a huge waste of time. It looks bad, no matter what method I use. And now I'm almost out of time for the first day and I made no progress over the last hour and a half. Oh yeah, uh, I forgot to mention that I have to sleep. Yeah, so that's gonna lose me a lot of time unfortunately, but I got back to work on actually improving the game, instead of just trying to add these little graphic enhancements. So I focused on making enemies for the next few hours, and I set up this basic enemy that just goes straight towards the engine. It's the slime. The slime deals contact damage to the player and anything that it touches. He's not a big danger on his own, but whenever he brings all of his friends, it can become an issue. And also set up health bars for enemies, buildings, the engine, and the player. This is another place where the instance controller base class came in handy, as I only had to set up this logic once for instances instead of four times. Very handy. There are 16 hours left and I have a basic enemy, but the game ends after you kill the three you put in the scene, so I need to make a proper game loop. So I'm gonna do that. There are now 15 hours left and it's nearly 1am, so I'm absolutely done for the night, or I guess morning, but I got a lot done in the last hour. I set it up so that the player respawns after a few seconds whenever you die. So dying as a player is not super punishing, but if you're dead then you can't rebuild walls so it's dangerous and your engine could get destroyed, which actually makes you lose the game. I also made buildings cost money to place. Plus, I set up some UI for your building selection. Enemies give you money, which you can see over here on the other UI that I just made. Plus, I set up the first new sort of building, the turret. It doesn't work, but you can build it anyways, and it works well as a very overpriced wall. And finally, I made enemy waves to spawn. I have to manually set up each of these waves in the inspector, which is not very roguelike of me, so I'm going to try to make them automatically generate soon. But for now, I can just use this to get a basic idea of how the game loop will work. But it's time to sleep now. 
So I slept, and then I made breakfast and stuff, and well, I have 5 hours left. Yeah, it's time to get going. I started out by just adding in some nice bits of polish, things that make the game more satisfying to play. So I added hit flash, some new particles for taking and dealing damage, some sound effects, and I polished the screen shake a bit so that it's less annoying. And now it's time to turn my focus to the turret who currently cannot turn its focus to look at the enemies, so it's time to fix that. And I spent a whole hour on the turret. Originally, I really wanted it to turn over time to face the enemy. I don't know why I wanted this though, is that it took a lot of time, and rotations suck, and it just kept overshooting it, so I ultimately just cut it out, and now it just automatically sets its rotation to face the enemy. And getting shooting set up was easy. So now I have turrets to find the nearest enemy and shoot at them. And the best part is that I can reuse this shooting and aiming behavior for the enemies themselves. Now I sat down and drew out the last few pieces of art that I need. I drew out the two new buildings, the bomb tower and the heal tower. The bomb tower will basically just be the turret, but it'll shoot slower and deal crowd damage, and the heal tower will heal buildings around it over time. I also made plans for two new enemies, the giant and the centaur. And so I should probably talk about the name and theme of the game, as I actually have not mentioned it yet. The game is themed to hell. More specifically, the hell from Dante's Inferno, with the circles and references to Greek mythology and stuff. That's why there are centaurs. I didn't really include much of this theming in the actual game though, but if I ever continue development, then it'll be a lot more important. But for now, I'm going to implement these new enemies. I was going to add the old recolor of the player as a new enemy called the Lost Soul, which would pathfind directly towards the engine, which takes gaps in your defense into account and goes around any holes. But I realized that it would take too long to get pathfinding up and running, so I just made the other two enemies instead who are more interesting anyways. The giant is super simple. It's a bigger slime with more HP that moves slower and deals a bit more damage. Basically, it's just a big tank. And finally, the centaur uses the same shooting script as its hurts in order to fire bullets at the player. I figured that an enemy that focuses on killing the player would be interesting. Another thing that I dropped was animations for enemies, as I drew out all these walk cycles for the centaur and giants, but I didn't want to spend valuable time implementing them. And I didn't think that the enemies look awful without them, so I felt it was okay to leave it out get the game to actually be a roguelike now, so these two last systems I believe will make it much closer into a complete game. First off, chests. These will spawn after some stages and can be opened for money, and whenever you open them, they'll give you a random upgrade. The idea is that you'll have to adapt to these upgrades in a similar effect to the items from Risk of Rain 2. You have some control over your build, but it's up to you to make the best out of the hand you are dealt from the random generation. And the other new system is the enemy wave generator, which will make the game infinitely scaling. Well, I implemented the chest system and a few upgrades. Admittedly, they are pretty basic upgrades, each one only levels up all of a certain sort of building, which increases that category of buildings HP and damage, if the building does damage. I don't know if this will really be all that fun, but it doesn't matter as I have to hurry up and finish the game now. And that's it. I got enemy wave generation in last second. It works with an animation curve, which lets me balance the amount of enemies that spawn. The way that waves generate is that each enemy has a cost, like the giants cost 10 points, the centaurs cost 3, and the slimes cost 1. And each wave has a point budget. Enemies are randomly spawned to meet this budget. It's a basic system, but it makes the game get harder over time with a large amount of randomization to each wave. Plus, I was also able to get the bomb tower in last second, but I didn't get to the heal tower. But that's it. It's time to sit down and play a few rounds of the game to see if it's actually any good. So I was testing the game, and it was kinda too easy. So I increased the enemy scaling, and it got better. But there are still a lot of issues that I knew would happen, as 24 hours is just not enough time to properly set up all the systems I needed for this game to work well. The biggest issue is that you can increase the power of your base with these upgrades and building all these turrets and stuff, and the enemies increase in power over time, the player actually doesn't increase in power at all themselves, so you become completely obsolete as the game goes on. And also, just spamming towers everywhere is by far the best strategy at later waves, especially since you can place towers on top of each other, which needs to be fixed. Some other issues are that the chest and upgrades suck, plus enemies get stuck on them. That system honestly just needs to be completely overhauled and was kind of just thrown in there the way I could say it was closer to a roguelike. But thinking about it, I believe I have a better idea for the system that's less inspired by Risk of Rain 2 and more so fits the tower defense style of the game. But that's something that I'll get to if I ever continue on with this game. Also, centaurs are annoying and dying and respawning is janky. But I feel like the game has good elements to it as well, as the building and combat both feel pretty good and I think that I could expand this into a pretty solid little game in the future. So if you'd like to see that, then please subscribe. And also if you want to check out my main project, which is a bullet hell action RPG called Project Seaborn, then check out this video where I cover the first 100 days of development. But that's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.